In this topic, we're going to talk about uh, what I phrase the best kept secret in Azure websites or web apps, which is Kudu. Um, That's not to be confused with Kodu, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, Kudu is a, uh, an environment that we have when we're working specifically with our web apps. Um, previously, we used to call these websites, um, but now they're called web apps inside of Azure. And really what Kudu is about, it's an environment for us to allow us to peer into the back end of our web apps. So when we think about a web application, um, it's a PaaS offering that we have in Azure. And along with that PaaS offering is we don't get to control the VM specifically. We can't RDP into this VM. We can't get in there and kind of muddle with the settings. Uh, as opposed to that, we have VMs that are already spun up uh, to do our stuff in Azure, and basically we're just going to bring our application and deploy it there. But if we bring our application up there, sometimes it's still helpful to understand like what's happening behind the scenes. We're running our application up there. We, we still have to think about things like memory and CPU and all the things that go into running a healthy application. And so part of Kudu is to be able to expose some of these elements back to you uh, and give you a, a little bit more control over what's happening there. So if you take a look at my screen, we have a, uh, the Azure websites. Um, I just basically deployed a standard out-of-the-box MVC application up here, and you can see it's running in Azure. But one of the things that's hidden here is we can actually come into, if we prepend the SCM to the Azure websites domain name, uh, when we go in there, we get into this environment called Kudu. Now, obviously, I'm logged in um, because I had pre-authenticated this, so that it's, it's secured by whatever credentials you have in Azure. But in here, we can actually see a lot of telemetry and back-end information about what's happening with our app. Uh, you can see down here, we can go into things like app settings, and we can download the JSON file. I'll show you those in a second. Uh, we can look at what deployments and files we have up here. This is pretty cool. We can actually go into the debug console here, and we're actually on that VM executing remote commands on our site. So if we were to drill into our site and go into our root, um, this is the site that I deployed up there. So there's our bin folder with all our stuff deployed. There's our global ASAX. Everything that we're used to seeing, we can even see our web configs down here. We also have options in here to go ahead and manipulate these things so we can download them or edit them. I'll show you a couple things with that here in a second. We can also go into Process Explorer. So Process Explorer is exactly what it says. We actually have uh, some things running up here on this website, and anybody familiar with an ASP.NET website will recognize the W3WP process, which is our worker uh, that's running our actual website. Now in this case, you can see we have three running here, and what's interesting is we have one that says SCM. Um, remember, we put SCM in the URL. Uh, that's our environment here for Kudu. So that's actually our environment running Kudu, and this is our actual production website that's running up there. Um, and we can drill into things like, so if we wanted to come in and look at the properties, we can see all the different things that are happening behind there, how many threads are running, what the CPU usage is. We can drill into modules and handles, all the different things that, that we need to understand when we're running large-scale applications up here and be able to drill through to see if, when things go wrong, did a module get loaded, where's the exception happening, happening? those kind of things. We can even see the environment that it's running in. So just like on a regular server where we do a path or a, a you know, look at our system environment variables, we can see the same thing here. So that's really, uh, really an awesome set of tools and it's kind of hidden. Um, a lot of times when I'm working uh, with customers, they don't even know that this exists. They think when they're running a web app, it's hands off. I can't see anything that's happening up there. It's a total black box. But it's not really, like we have all these options. We also have ways to stream your logs. We can do diagnostic dumps. If we do a diagnostic dump, you'll see exactly it's gonna dump out a zip file, which basically takes all that stuff I was just showing you, the environment, what processes are running, all those different things, you can do it in one shot and grab it. So if you had some sysadmins that it might help you with uh, your application, you could do that. And one of the, uh, the key things here that's really nice, especially for developers when you start using this, is this notion of site extensions. So if you go into the site extensions, um, I have one installed here, but we'll check a gallery first. We have this huge gallery, and some of these are created by Microsoft, and some of these are created by partners and independent VARs. But basically, these are little packages that you can use. So we have diagnostics as a service. This allows you to basically wrap up different things that it can grab out there, event log viewer, uh, memory dumps, all those different things. So it can do that for you um, on the fly. We have site admin tools, a lot of things in here from different things. We even have these minifiers. Um, so these are some that were created internally by Mads and Saeed to basically do compression for you. So you can say, I want to minify my JavaScript and CSS files and all that kind of thing. You can actually do that in the cloud. So you don't have to do it on the developer workstation per se. So minifier is like reducing the amount of code? 
Minifier is just a concept to basically take a, let's say a CSS file, a style sheet, has a lot of white space in it by default, and if you run this Minify, it takes all the white space out and shrinks it down so it's much smaller. Very cool. Um, but one of the key ones that's really important is this notion, it's called Visual Studio Online. Now I already have this installed, um, but you would just click on it to install it, and then once you click on, um, once you have this site extension loaded, you'll see that we get this environment up here, and it's called uh, Monaco, is the code name for it that's still up there. But essentially, we're peering into our website here. So if I went into my web config, you can see I can view it. I can edit this right on the fly here. Don't even have to click Save. I can actually like click on it. It'll auto-save back to the server. So how is that different than if I just log into VisualStudio.com? So the question is, how is this different from Visual Studio Online? So Visual right. Studio Online is an environment for us to uh, check our source code into, as well as project management and those kind of things. That doesn't auto-deploy by default. Uh -huh. So you're checking into your source repository, then you would have to deploy it. This is deploy, this is live, it's like right now. It. Yeah, exactly. Nice. So this is on-the-fly editing. So if you said, we're just trying to get our app running up there, and oh, we need to tweak one of the config settings, you can come up and do this. We don't even have to get through a redeployment, uh, which is typical with the apps. Excellent. It's a great tool for diagnostics, and when you're getting started working with it, there's a lot of features here. It would be too much for me to go over, but we have Git integration here. There's actually a local Git repository provision behind the scenes, so if you wanted to like check your code into this local repository that exists up here in Azure, uh, you could do that. Um, you can also upload files, so what's nice is if you said, oh, well, I missed a file, I forgot to upload, right there we can right click and upload. We could add new files on the fly here. It's a great set of tools for you whenever you start working with your web apps up there in the cloud. And with that, uh, that kind of concludes and wraps up the topic on Kudu environment in Azure.